weather's really feeling nice today and it's got me feeling like I want to get going on my gardening project. This is the area that I've chosen. Uh, it's a nice field, kind of in a valley. As you can see behind me, there's access to water, and that's really important because I'm not going to have a hose or a spigot or anything to water this stuff. I can't set up a sprinkler system. All the water that's going to fall on my crops is either stuff that falls from the sky, down as rain, or stuff that I grab from here in buckets and bring over to where I'm going to be planting the plants. So the proximity to water is really important. Also, it has good sun exposure. It's pretty wide open here. Uh, there is some short brush in the area, uh, and I'm gonna be taking some of that down today, but there's a lot of really good sun here. South is the direction right here behind me, and uh, you know, as the sun arcs through the sky, it's gonna hit this area just behind you, uh, you know, really well with a lot of sun. The other nice thing about this area is that it's not it's not really very uh, conspicuous. Uh, the only way that someone's gonna come in here and see the garden is if they literally just walk through the area. It's kind of enclosed by trees on all sides, and even the area where I'm gonna be putting the garden, it, I'm gonna leave a lot of the high bushes uh, along the edge of it. So there's really only one way that people would be able to see that there's a garden planted here if they're coming through. Is it a risk? Yes, it's still a risk, but you know, given what I have available to me, which is a lot of forest land, you can't really do gardening in the forest unless you're gonna be planting like wild Old edible trees or something like that. Uh, you know, in terms of you know the kinds of crops that you're going to grow close to the ground, you can't do it in the forest. You need a wide open area, and this place has sun, it has privacy, and it has water. So today I'm going to get going on preparing the earth, and I've got some actually like really pimped out tools to do it. Uh, I've got an, a real shovel, and I've got a real straight rake. Uh, these were. You know, I'm not surprised that these kind of things were finds that I was able to get when I went into uh, that little, uh, you know, suburb kind of complex over there. Because when people were evacuating their homes or, you know, the homes were being raided, you know, there wasn't anyone saying, quick, honey, grab the shovel, <laughs> grab the straight rake, you know, before we evacuate. Uh, and even when people were doing, uh, you know, raids on the homes, uh, you know, people were looking for food. They were probably looking for money and, I don't know, big screen TVs and stuff like that. But stuff like this was completely overlooked and I was able to grab it and boy are these gonna be really useful today. There were a lot of different options for places that I could have chosen to put the garden in. But uh, this one here I think was really the best for a com uh, combination of reasons. Uh, including really nice access to sun. Whoa, 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 look, look. Yeah, there was a lot of that last night too. A lot of shooting stars. And of course, yesterday, that massive thing. You know, I, I gotta presume this is coming from the moon. Which means uh, we're probably gonna see more of this. This area behind me is the area that I've chosen to plant the garden in, and there's a number of reasons for that. The first is, if you look behind me, to the left and to the right-hand side, there's a lot of high bushes. Uh, what that does is it makes it so there's really only one way that you can see into this area. So if there's anybody walking over there or walking back in that direction, they're not necessarily going to see that there's a garden here. And that's a good thing because I don't want people walking by and A, saying, hey, look, there's a bunch of tomatoes, why don't I take those? Or B, hey, there must be a person nearby, let's, you know, mess with them. So I want to keep this as secret as I can. The other reason that this area is pretty good is that it's nice and flat. Again, it has that nice solar exposure, uh, but also it's slightly elevated above uh, the areas that have the stream running through them. And that has two benefits, I've noticed. One is that I don't want my crops to actually get flooded. Well, when you're in a floodplain, you tend to have good soils from the silts and, uh, you know, the seasonal flooding, you know, brings nutrients into the soil. So that tends to have a benefit for the dirt that's there, but you don't actually want your crops to be flooded while they're growing. Uh, the other benefit is that I've found that uh, the soil here, because of that uh, kind of, you know, seasonal flooding, is pretty good. I've, I've been pulling up all this, uh, this grass. I'm going to use the grass that I've been raking up as mulch, uh, you know, as I clear out the area. This is going to allow me to, you know, not have to water the stuff as much because I'm going to be mulching around all the crops. It'll also keep weeds from growing up as much because I'm, you know, shading the soil, so I'm going to have less problem with weeds coming up and shading my crops. Although a lot of those weeds that are, uh, you know, invariably going to grow are probably going to be edible, so we'll be seeing about those later because so in the past, whenever I've grown a garden, some of my best uh, crops were the wild edible weeds that invaded the garden. But anyway, I'll be using uh, the mulch to try to minimize how many weeds are going to be shading uh, the crops that I am growing. 
Uh, and again, because this is a uh, kind of a floodplain, and we're starting to get some of that nice sunlight that is going to really be beneficial to the crops here, uh, the soil is actually pretty darn good here. When I done my uh, initial recognizance of you know looking at the soil in this area, I thought I was going to have to bring stuff in because a lot of the soil that I was looking at was right near around where the water was. It tended to be sandy. It tended to be rocky. The soil up here is looking pretty good. So this is private. It's elevated slightly and it's got some pretty good soil in here. So I think this was a really good choice. So this section of forest floor I think is going to be uh, useful for grabbing to kind of lighten up the clay soil that I have down in the valley over there. So uh, what I'm, I'm doing is I'm kind of trying to take off a lot of this top layer here. It's a lot of uh, pine needles and uh, the pine needles are going to tend to acidify the soil. Now that would be fine for crops like tomatoes that like a, an acidic soil and I may grab some of these, in fact I'll put them in my little bucket right here, I may grab some of these for any place where I'm going to be planting tomatoes. But for a lot of crops, uh, they're going to acidify things beyond what you would really want. Uh, what I'm going to grab instead is this soil that's just underneath. And I don't want to go down too deep because it's kind of a, a thin layer of topsoil. And you can really tell the difference because you, you know, once you get past the pine needles on the top, you get a really, really dark bed of, of soil right on the top. And then it starts getting lighter as you go down. The, the darker stuff is the... Uh, the nice rich organic material and just pulling it right off the top here. Now I'm not going to need that much of it because again the soil down there is pretty good. It's a little high in clay content but I'm going to be using this just to kind of lighten it up and improve the, uh, the drainage of what's there. Some of this rotting stuff here, rotting log bits and things like that, that all goes in the bucket. That's all going to help as well. So here's the soil that we got here, and it definitely has some pretty, well, it's got some ice content right here, but it's got some pretty good clay content. And the way you can kind of test for clay is you just take the, uh, the dirt. If you can make it into a really easy moldable ball in your hand, you know you get a fair bit of clay in there. So what I'm planning on doing is taking this, which is good soil because it's going to hold moisture. It's not going to have, it's not sand where the moisture is just going to run right through it. It's going to hold moisture, but I want to lighten it up. And what I'm going to be using to do uh, for that is some uh, soil that I grabbed from the forest. And this is, I'm going to get these pine needles out of here. This is kind of a light organic decomposing duff layer. And if I take this and kind of just stew it in with the clay, I'll be able to get kind of a, uh, a growing medium that kind of gives me the best of both worlds. I'll have the lightness of the, the soil uh, from the forest, and I'll have that moisture retaining uh, capacity of the clays here. So just kind of stewing those in with each other. It's dirty work, but it's going to pay off in the end with much higher quality soil than if I grew in straight forest soil or grew in this straight clay. It's been an awful lot of work here today, but I feel like I've got the soil ready to a point where it's, you know, it's okay to start putting seeds in it. Uh, I've got this trench here in front of me, and I'm going to do something a little bit special with this. Uh, Native Americans here in this area used to plant uh, three different crops together, which uh, are referred to as the three sisters. And those crops were uh, some type of squash or a pumpkin, uh, beans, like a legume, a vining bean, and corn. And what was great about these is that they offered a diversity of nutrition between the beans and the corn. You had a grain and you had a legume, so you could create a cre uh, complete protein when you uh, mix those together and ate them. Uh, and the pumpkins uh, offer a lot of uh, vitamins and uh, nutrition, and uh, they all work together kind of physically in the same area as well. Uh, you'd have the corn, which would grow nice and tall, and uh, that would give uh, structure for the beans to vine up the corn. Uh, and then you have the pumpkins uh, that, you know, they stay pretty low uh, down towards the ground, and the broad leaves of the pumpkins would offer some, kind of some shade to the soil, keep the soil from drying out. So those three things work together super, super well. So uh, it's with some degree of disappointment uh, that I only have two of the three sisters. It's not going to be a threesome, unfortunately, here. We just have two of them. I have beans and I have pumpkins. I actually had a package of corn, but it was all empty. Um, which was really disappointing, <laughs> but yeah, I've got what I've got. Um, so I've got uh, some of the beans 
right here in this container. And what I'm going to be doing uh, is uh, putting in the beans just in kind of a trench that I make here with my hand. And I've kind of softened this soil up, so it's not a big deal to kind of put my hand through there. Uh, and I'm going to just make kind of a, a rough run of beans right through the middle here. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I've got some pumpkin seeds and I'm going to be putting pumpkin seeds just uh, maybe every like foot and a half or so in the trench right along there. Okay and now that I've got these guys in here I can just take the soil and lightly cover up the seeds that I've got here. Um, at this point, uh, I, I should give it a good watering to kind of soak it, uh, soak the, the soil to get the beans getting ready to germinate. Obviously, I'm missing the corn uh, part of this equation, so the beans aren't going to have anything to vine up, but I've got a solution to that. Uh, I've got this stick here, uh, which is, uh, some people will refer to this, at least in terms of the way that I'm about to use it, as a witch's comb. Um, the shorthand for anything related to nature that's called witches, like witch hazel or witch this or witch that, which uh, for practical purposes means probably useful. <laughs> so if you're ever looking at, you know, at different plants or things of that nature and, and something's called witch, it probably means that it's useful. Uh, that's, that's essentially what it translates into. And what's useful, useful about the witch's comb is uh, it gives the, uh, the beans that I just put in there something to vine up. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to get a couple other ones for along here. And that way when the beans start growing, they're going to grab onto this and they'll have something to go up. Obviously, if I had corn plants, I could, uh, you know, have them going up the corn plants. I don't. But, you know, honestly, even if I had corn in here, I'd probably put some of these in here just for some extra strength and uh, rigidity so that if there's wind, it's not kind of blowing things over. Um, I'm going to pull this out right now, though. And the reason is because this is really, this is really early in the spring. Uh, we're... I have every anticipation that there could be some night frost and I don't want these seeds that I just put in here to get hit with frost and killed. So there's a bunch of different ways that I can deal with that. Uh, one of them, which uh, you, you know used to be popular with people, is to take like just an old juice container and cut off the bottom. Now if I didn't have a million of these things, because people were always throwing these things out, if I didn't have a million of these, I would not want to be cutting off the bottom of these because these are really useful items. But I've got a million of them, and I can afford to, you know, chop off the bottoms of some of these. Um, I'm not going to be using this right here. I'm going to be putting on some of my other plants that aren't uh, made in a row. But the idea with these is if you plant a plant right here, you can just put this right over the plant. Maybe uh, put some dirt up around it so it's not going to go blowing away. And it acts like a little miniature greenhouse. In fact, one nice thing about uh, these bottles is that they go one step further in terms of acting like a greenhouse. Uh, in that they have a, a, a roof vent that you can open by taking off the top. So if it's kind of cold, uh, cold outside, but you want to leave uh, the bottle over your germinating plant, you can take the top off so it doesn't overheat in there, and you can kind of control that a little bit. I'm not going to use this here because I've got a whole row of plants. Uh, I'm going to use it over on one of my like uh, solitary plants. But uh, there are other approaches that I can use for a whole row. Um, before I jump over to what I'm actually going to do for this, I've mentioned I got this. This is a drawer from a refrigerator. And uh, this thing, you know, this would be pretty good. You could do some, uh, you know, if I had a bunch of these, I could do them in a row. But again, the same idea. It's like a little miniature greenhouse. And uh, that will allow me to, uh, you know, keep them a little bit more protected. Even if it's, again, cold out, but if it's sunny, it'll help to warm the ground. That's not what I'm going to be doing here, though, because I've got a whole row. And at the moment... None of these guys even really need to have any sun. Now, the sun's helping to warm the soil, and that's good. But at nighttime, you know, they, they don't need the sun, and they're underground, so it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to be doing is I've got just some plastic sheeting. And what I can do is take this plastic sheeting, hold it down with a couple rocks like that. I've got some other bags, and I'll just kind of go down along the row. And then on top of this stuff, I can just put some insulation over it. And this is really going to protect the ground. If we have any kind of a, you know, a frost come in, as long as it's not a hard freeze, this is really going to protect the ground of what's under it. In fact, I could probably reverse these. I could probably put the, this stuff underneath and then put the bag on the top side. It would certainly make it easier to find the rose later on. Although, I, you know, maybe I want them camouflaged, you know, given the circumstances. So there are all sorts of different approaches for, uh, you know, insulating all this stuff. Wow. 
all these worms and everything in here. This is really good soil. There are all sorts of different approaches, but the basic idea is you want to have some kind of like a coat, some kind of a uh, way of protecting the soil. So at night, when it gets kind of chilly, uh, you know, you're not getting your frost hit hurting your plants. Once these guys start to germinate, I can still use this kind of bag, but what I need to do is kind of pop it up a little bit, again, using the stones on the side, and make kind of a tunnel going through the middle. And again, you know, I can still take this stuff, kind of put it along the edges to try to make it so uh, wind's not blowing under there. Uh, but this is just going to be for the next several weeks, and uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit across your fingers. You know, I've, I've got plenty of seeds, so if some of these come up and they get killed, I can always try to grow some new ones, but you know, I don't want to have a lot of loss of crops because, you know, this is what I might be depending on for food. And uh, given my skills as a gardener, that's, that's a little unsettling. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.